In this video, we'll be adding a progress indicator to the timer project that we did before. We will build a timer similar to this Android timer app as shown here on the right, and the actual project is this one on the left side. Mainly we have two components here, the timer component and the progress indicator component. The progress indicator rotates from 360 degrees to zero in sync with the timer. And once the timer reaches the five second mark, the font and the progress indicator turn red. And when it hits the zero mark, the indicator vanishes and the timer font turns gray. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, like the usual, let's create a folder and name it timer. And then open it with Visual Studio Code. Inside the timer project, let's create an HTML file and call it index.html. Then a CSS file, name it styles.css. And finally, a JavaScript file and call it script.js. Now, let's head over to HTML file and create the HTML boilerplate using Emmet. And let's change the site title to timer with progress indicator. And then let's open this HTML file with the live server. All right, let's link the styles.css to index.html using the link tag. And also let's link the JavaScript file, okay? Now let's test for connections. Go to styles.css and change the body element background color to red. And it should turn red, all right. And for the JavaScript, let's use the alert method to test for connection. And indeed, it's connected to index.html. Now, go to the CSS file and you can import a Google font that you like. And in my case, I'll use a Google font called Hebo. All right, let's perform a CSS reset. Margin, zero. Padding, zero and box sizing equal to border box under the HTML element let's set the font family to mine is Hebo and the font color to hash 088b8b okay and since we'll be centering a lot of elements within their parent container Let's create a class and call it center. And we will use the usual flexbox centering. Display flex, justify content, center, align items, center. And like what I've said, we will use this class for centering. Now, let's go back to HTML file and create a main container and apply the class center to this container. So all of the elements inside this container will be centered. Inside this container, we have two main components. The progress indicator and the timer itself. Now, before we start writing our markup here, let me give you a high overview of how our UI is set up, especially the progress indicator part, and allow me to demonstrate it to you. So, this rectangle here represents the main container that will hold two components, the progress indicator and the timer itself. At the center of this container, let's place a white circle, and this circle contains four components. The first component is a red semicircle, like this one, and let's place it at the center. The second component is a blue semicircle, the third component is a black full circle, and it's slightly smaller than the white circle. Now, to simulate a moving progress indicator, we will rotate the red semicircle 180 degrees and the blue semicircle 360 degrees, and we will rotate them at the same time, like so. And as you see here, we have this moving progress indicator effect, okay? Now, we want the progress indicator to be visible only when moving from zero to 360 degrees. Right now, the blue semicircle is peaking here. 
To fix this, let's place another semicircle, a white one, and let's place it on top of the blue semicircle and below the black full circle. And right now, the white semicircle is covering the blue one. Now, what we're going to do here is, again, like earlier, we will rotate the red semicircle 180 degrees and the blue one 360 degrees, but this time, when the two semicircles reach 180 degrees rotation, we will remove the white semicircle that we have just added and then continue on rotating the blue one until it reaches the 360 degrees position. And here's the edited version of that rotation. And then, we will place our timer at the center like so. And that's how we will approach our UI. And I hope this gives you the main idea of what we are about to do. So let's head back to our HTML file. Okay, let's create that white circle and call it circle-container. And then apply the class center to it. And inside this container, we have three semicircles. Red, blue, and then white. Remember? We also have the black full circle. And let's call it outermost dash circle. Now, let's go to styles.css and apply styles to these elements. For the main container, its width will be 100%. Height is 100% of the viewport height. And let's set its background color to orange. And inside this main container, we have the progress indicator and then the timer. Let's apply styles to circle-container. Let's set its width and height to 400 pixels. Set its background color to white. And let's make this container circular by making its border radius equal to 50%. Set its position to absolute. And then assign a z-index of 1 so that it will be placed at the very bottom. And for the three semicircles, let's set their width to 50%, height to 100%, position to absolute, top 0, left 0. For the first semicircle, let's set its background color to red and its Z index to 2. For the second semicircle, let's set its Z index to 3 and its background color to blue. And for the third semicircle, Z index equal to 4 and background color to white. And for now, let's hide this semicircle by setting its display property to none. And for the outermost circle, let's make its width and height both equal to 390 pixels. Background color to black, border radius 50%, and Z index of 5. Now, to make these red and blue rectangles appear to be semicircular, set their parents overflow property equal to hidden okay now to test for the rotation of the semicircles for now let's use the hover selector and select the main container to trigger the rotation first let's turn off the overflow property of the circle container class so when you hover over the main container the first or the red semicircle rotates 180 degrees. And to see this rotation clearly, let's hide the black full circle by setting the outermost circle's display property to none. And upon hovering, you'll see the red semicircle rotates. Let's do similar thing with the second or blue semicircle, but for this one, we want it to rotate full 360 degrees. So red rotates 180 degrees, and at the same time, blue rotates 360 degrees, okay? However, we want the rotation to happen at the center of the white circle, right here. So let's set the transform origin property of all semicircles to right and center. Now, they rotate at this point, and let's take care of the third semicircle, the white one. and set its opacity to zero after one second. 
meaning when both red and blue semicircle reach 180 degrees, we want the white semicircle to become transparent. And of course, we want to show it first. So let's comment out this line. So if I hover over the main container, the white semicircle is visible, then the red and blue rotate, white disappears as blue continues to rotate until 360 degrees. And finally, let's uncomment the overflow property of the circle container class, and then let's display the black outermost circle. So if we hover over the main container, we'll see the rotation that we are expecting, okay? So now that we know that our rotation works, we don't need this hover effect anymore. So let's comment these lines out. Now, this is just what we did. We rotated the red and blue semicircles clockwise. However, what we really want to happen is to have the semicircles rotate counterclockwise from 360 degrees to zero, like this. So, how do we write our code to accomplish this? Well, we need to come up with an equation that involves an angle that changes with time, right? We know that the progress indicator starts from 360 degrees to zero. So we have an angle that changes with time and we input this angle to the rotate property value of the transform property of our semicircles. So what we need is, we need to multiply 360 degrees by some factor that starts with unity or one, all the way down to zero. So we need a fraction here as a multiplier. And this is where we incorporate our timer. We know that we set our timer to some time, for example, 10 seconds. And then our timer starts to count down from 10. So 10 divided by 10 is 1. And then 9. 9 divided by 10 is 0 0.9. 8. 8 divided by 10 is 0 0.8. And so on. Let's call this number here set time. And this number in the numerator, call it remaining time. So we have angle equals remaining time divided by set time times 360 degrees. So what we have here is as our timer counts down, this angle decreases, okay? We know what the set time is since we assigned this. What we need to find out is the remaining time. Okay, now to get the remaining time, we need to set up some variables and constants here. First, when we call date that now, we get back the current time in milliseconds. And we call this start time. And this portion here represents how long our counter will run. And let's call this set time. And the sum of these two time periods, we call it future time. Now, if we run this in a loop, date that now will be called over and over again. And this portion here will increase. Now, we call this section current time and this one remaining time. However, Initially, this is equal to start time, and this one is equal to set time, and our angle starts at 360 degrees. And then, when we start running this inside a loop by calling the set interval method, current time increases while remaining time decreases until it reaches zero, and then our angle ends up at zero degree. So, we now know what the angle equation is. Angle is equal to remaining time divided by set time multiplied by 360 degrees, where remaining time is equal to future time minus current time. Now, with all these in mind, let's head over to script.js and let's start writing our code. Okay, let's bring in all the semicircles in our code and call it semicircles. Let's set up our time input. We need to convert our time input in milliseconds. And then our set time is equal to hours plus minutes and seconds. Start time is equal to date that now, as we discussed earlier. And future time is equal to start time plus set time. Let's create a function and call it countdown timer. And then let's run this function over and over again by calling the set interval function. And then let's invoke the countdown timer function. Inside this function, we have the progress indicator, the timer, the five second condition, which I will explain later, and the end section, okay? 
Let's set current time equal to date that now. Remaining time equal to future time minus current time. And finally, our angle equation. Let's set up the progress indicator. If angle is greater than 180 degrees, do not display the white semicircle. Rotate the red semicircle to 180 degrees and rotate the blue semicircle to the value of the angle constant that we calculated. And if angle is less than or equal to 180 degrees, Display the white semicircle and then rotate the blue and red semicircles to whatever the value of the angle constant. Now, to test our code, let's set our timer to run for 10 seconds. You'll see our progress indicator in action. Now, notice here that the indicator continues to rotate even though it already reached zero degree. We need to stop this by invoking the clear interval method if remaining time is less than zero. And now, you see that the progress indicator stops when it reaches zero degree. Let's go back to styles.css and change the background color of some of our elements for the main container from orange to white, for circle-container from white to hash triple D. For the first and second semicircle, let's change their background color to hash 088B8B. And for the third semicircle, from white to hash triple D. And finally, for the outermost circle, from black to white. And let's run our code and see how it looks. Progress indicator rotates counterclockwise and it stops at zero degree. Now, notice if you look closely here, you'll see part of the semicircle showing up. Do you see it? To fix this, let's hide all the semicircles once the indicator stops. And once we run it again, We now have a clean UI. Okay, let's head over to index.html and work on the timer section. Now, I talked about this timer section in great details from my previous tutorial, so to save time, I'll go over this rather quickly, okay? Now, if you want to watch that tutorial, here's the link. Now, let's create a main container for our timer and assign the center class to it. And this main container contains another container that will hold each digit in our timer. And again, we also want to center its content. Okay, let's go to styles.css and apply styles to the timer section. For timer-container class, let's set its width to 330 pixels, height to 200 pixels, and Z index to 6. For timer class, Let's set its width to 400 pixels, height to 100 pixels, and Z index to 7. For each timer element, let's set its font size to 70 pixels, font weight to 100, set its width and height to 80 pixels. And let's use Flexbox to center each component. Display Flex, Justify Content Center, Align Items Center. And finally, let's set its margin top and bottom to zero and left and right to 10 pixels. And let's create a class called colon and then set its background color to transparent, width to 10 pixels, margin left and margin right to zero, and then padding bottom to 15 pixels. Okay. Now, let's go to script.js and find the timer section. Let's convert the remaining time that we've calculated earlier to hours, minutes, and seconds using the modulo or the remainder operator. Now, let's bring in the timer class to our code and name it timer.
Alright, let's display our timer. Now, all of these are explained in my countdown timer tutorial. You may want to visit that tutorial in case you need clarifications. Now, if you run our project, you see our timer in action. However, we want to display two digits for each section here instead of just one digit. And also, when the timer stops, we want to display all zeros here. Let's take care of the latter. So, copy this part here, and then go to the end section, and then paste it here. And instead of displaying the values of hours, minutes, and seconds, we display zeros. And if we reload the page, we get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 at the end, okay? Now, to display two digit values here, I went to the Stack Overflow website and did a search on how to prepend zero to single digit number. And I got this code. Just add this code to hours, minutes, and seconds. And if we reload our page, we now have two digit display for each section. And two more requirements. When the timer reaches the five second mark, we want the progress indicator and the digits to turn red. So go to the five second condition section and change the background color of the first and the second semicircle to red and the timer font color to red as well if the remaining time is less than or equal to five seconds. And finally, let's change the timer font color to light gray once the timer stops. Now, let's test this. Let's set the timer to 15 seconds. The timer starts counting down. And when it reaches the 5 second mark, the digits and the progress indicator turn red. And when the timer reaches 0, the digits turn light gray. Okay? So, I hope you learned something from this video and try to add something to this project. Be creative, make it your own, and most importantly, enjoy the process. Happy coding! If you found this video helpful, check out this website for more tutorials about programming and electrical engineering. So for eftechlab.com, I'm Edgardo Felix.